and we stopped at 217. And we were talking, we were talking about, um, let me just turn to it. Actually, 217. 217, um, it's talking about do not love the world or the things in the world. Verse 15, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. And we be, be, briefly, I can talk, uh, we briefly looked at what a lot of people think that's saying. And if you remember, that's the chart I gave you. Um, this one. A lot of people say, uh, oh, he abides for it. In other words, the, you have to do the will of God to get to heaven. And... That's not correct, right? Because we do not always do the will of God. And they would interpret abide forever as meaning has everlasting life. So they, they would teach a basically a, a kind of works salvation, right? And a works, what is works salvation? Trying to justify yourself with what you do, right? But you're doing it. Okay. Uh, There's sorry. different kinds of work salvation, right? Yeah. I mean, if you walk to someone up on the street and you say, well, why should I get to heaven? And they say, I'm a good person. That's one kind of work salvation. Right? Pays his taxes. Yeah. Um, the more common kind of work salvation would be, this morning was a good example, um, I called upon the Lord to be saved. Is that what Jesus said in John 3.16? 10, 13. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever calls upon Me will be saved. It's believe. believe. Is there a difference between believing and calling? Believe first, then you call. Right? You could, but you don't have to call in order to get to heaven. Remember, there's, there's different kinds of salvation in the Bible. And I was really glad, okay, I, I try to be positive if I can, uh, that Josh pointed out that the word salvation in uh, Acts uh, 16.30, right? Yeah. Which just says, uh, what must I do to be saved? And he said, oh, well, he, he wasn't talking about salvation from death or you know, from, from damage or something else. He was talking about salvation from hell. Like he said. So in other words, he, he pointed out that there's different kinds of salvation. That's why I was kind of glad. So if people, people need to look at the context to see what kind of salvation it's talking about, right? And then, um, so that was... That's that was a, a good, good point, thing. I guess. Yeah. Because I figured that to just cut to this chase and just get it over with, just believe, and, you know, the rest will fall into place. I mean. Yeah, like, well, like, anyway, work salvation can mean um, I need to believe, but then I need to do something else. But, right? But call, us, call to God to save you. It's you call out of work, like, I always, that's what I've done first. When I first got saved, that's what I've done. It's a good start, yeah, right? Called. Yeah, I called. Hey, you think God is mad for unbelievers calling upon Him to be saved yeah. and still being unsaved? No, no. I don't think He's mad at that. But hopefully someone could talk to you later and say, yeah. you know, you, you need to believe in Jesus for everlasting life. Not Follow just, up, see what you've done. Yeah, and clarify to someone. Clarify that. Yeah, so somewhere along the line, someone clarified with you, right? Yeah. I know they did with me. So. Marshall Baptist. I mean, Crumlin Baptist. Yeah. 
So the idea is that a lot of people are confused. That's really all I just want to say. So works salvation can can be at various levels, and um, a lot of people take this verse and say that. Uh, they wouldn't say that you wouldn't have to believe in Jesus, right? People that would argue this, people that are, would argue this would say you, you need to believe in Jesus, but unless you do God's will, then it just demonstrates you're not really saved huh. if you don't do as well. So in, in, in that way, they're really adding works, right? So they're saying faith <coughs> plus do God's will. Faith is enough. Equals, I'll just say E-L, everlasting life. So you don't need this, right, to get everlasting life. You just need faith. Yeah. That's my point. Yeah. 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 So That's right. That. Right back. That's what I meant by so, going to the chase. That, well, I mean... When, when uh, you yeah. say word salvation, that's what I meant by just keep your faith. But people um, add a lot to that, don't they? Be baptized, yeah. um, commit yourself to love Christ, obey Christ. Well, be, be an example, okay. walk, be a good example. Follow Jesus. Are we faith plus following Jesus gives eternal life? No. You don't need the following Jesus to get eternal life. No. So. Well, well, faith is actually believing in Him. Mm -hmm. Right. We're not following him by believing in him because he didn't believe in himself, right? Huh. <laughs> yeah, he believed in his father. Yeah. But he didn't have to be saved. He didn't need to be. Yeah. So we don't follow Jesus to, to get mean. everlasting life. We follow you. him <coughs> to show we love him, basically. And, and we looked at that already several weeks, you know, talking about obe obeying him because we love him. For us, not obeying it, just last. And I, I didn't cover my last column. You can figure out. I, primary use of abide in John's writings is not talking about getting everlasting life. So it says, uh, has uh, eternal life. Uh, he who does the, the will of God abides forever. So the primary use of the word abide is my point. I'm focusing on that in that word. Does not talk about getting everlasting life. Abide is always a command to believers right. after they demonstrate belief. <coughs> and I, I, I was struggling trying to define that <laughs> last time. And I should have just read yeah, it. Yeah, it's right there. It's right. Uh, yeah, it says, There right. is an eternal permanence to the character and activity of such a person. So if, if, you are, well, you're if you're a believer that. and you're following after God, His will, seeking His will, um, and his will in this passage is not following after the world, not following after the lust of the flesh, the lust of eyes, right? Yeah. It's doing what God wants us to do. And that ha that is what has an eternal permanence to the, act to the activity of that person. How many people do the will of God even after they're saved? They have to learn it, right? They have to really learn it. I don't, yeah. I don't know, you really, that's a hard thing to do. You yeah. know, you know, I think the reason most people don't do the will of God is because they don't know what it is. They really don't know what they want, unless <laughs> right. they read it. And I mean, if, if they don't, you know, get involved with a church or Christians who are really digging into the Bible, yeah. how are they going to know what the will of God is? They don't know. I got you. How will they know they're sinning? You know, there's verses in the Bible that are pretty rough, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you're not... Preachers don't like those verses. Yeah. They, they would like to preach this book and then skip over a verse, right? Also. <laughs> but you can't skip over verses if you're too, doing verse by verse. It's too hard to deal and, with. And it forces them to do that. And it forces them to talk to their congregation about it. Some preacher yeah. might get But seen. anyway. So it isn't always a walk in the park, right? I think not. Um, I was kind of struggling how to do this next section. Where are we? Um, we are at the bottom of page 919. Okay, gotcha. Oh, the Antichrist? So, 
this is a new section, a new section in my study Bible too. Uh, the exceptions of the last hour is what it's called, and Zane in his commentary called it resisting the Antichrists. Antichrist. Okay, a lot of people kind of get a little distracted by that word, right? Uh, they think about the rapture and the beast and the Antichrist and all that, which um, that's in John's other book, isn't it? Yeah. Revelation talks a lot about that. So this is something that he knew quite a bit about. But he said the Antichrist is already here. So let, let's go ahead and read the text. Sometimes that's the best place to start, right? This text of the Bible. The Bible. The Bible. Now, even though Zane's stuff's good, it's not the best, right? <laughs> so let's just read, um, what is the section? No, it's short. <laughs> um, two, two eighteen. I'll just read a few verses here. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Okay. Revelation, it's coming. But then he says, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is, is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Well, it seems like he's saying the same thing over and over again here a little bit, but... Um, <clears throat> but, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, that's a key statement there. Yeah. Apparently, somebody was denying that Jesus was the Christ. Um, he is anti Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. But the main Antichrist hasn't come yet. This is... A bunch of people in the world now, right? The Antichrist. That's correct. But not the main one yet. He's going to take over everything. So, um, I don't know if it, it talks about this in your book, but basically, um, let me see if it talks about this. Like I said, the. Um, The book of Revelation talks quite a bit about the Antichrist, but the, the point that I would, would want to make is that there were seven churches in the beginning of the book of Revelation. And the reason that I believe that uh, John is the one who planted those churches. John was, became like a missionary. So, so some of these apostles became missionaries. They planted churches. And so uh, they went through Asia Minor. I don't have a map. Like Turkey, yeah. um, that area, yeah. planting these churches, Ephesus, uh, you know, Northeast all those Thyatira, Thyatira, you know, all those churches in the weak church, the first couple chapters of Revelation. And what was happening was there was false teaching that was getting into those uh, churches, and that's why John wrote this book. So um, it wasn't. It's not just nebulous, right? There's in other words, reason. there's a reason Rational. he put this in here. Was because these were people come. There were people uh, that were part of their churches. They came from Jerusalem. That's where the church began, right? And it sort of fed missionaries out. And there was people uh, in these churches saying that Jesus was not the Christ. Teaching another gospel, right? And, and then that was those. That was the spirit, really, the spirit of Antichrist. So did so. If Jesus was not supposed to be the Christ, which I understand that rationale, that reasoning, who was supposed to be? Or they didn't have an answer for that. 
Are setting for trial? That's a good are, question. Or were they just of the, of the idea that, oh, you got to hurry up and wait because he's not arrived yet. He hasn't come. Because Let's that's kind of shallow, no? Let's see if your what I gave you answers that. Did he say he was a prophet? Um, not a priest, a king? I don't know. Let's just follow the, the text here, okay? Uh, not only is the world, world passing away, but what is more, the apostle and his readers are living in the last hour. Interesting. Though hour can refer to a portion of yes, the day, I, I it is that. also used in reference to an undetermined length of time. Right. Uh, so, like, the last hour began then, 2,000 years ago, yeah. <laughs> and it's still the last still, hour. That's yeah. a long hour. <laughs> but I think, specifically though, I think he's talking about what was happening in these churches. So, um, here's the last hour when human history will climax with the rise and overthrow of Satan's final great deception. So he's tying that in to the final deception of the Antichrist. I'm the beginning of the tribulation period. Now I'm on page 920. Many interpreters take the term Antichrist as a reference to the man of sin who will claim Godhood in the Jewish temple in 2 Thessalonians 2. Remember he'll come into the temple and take over it? He'll say he's God. Yeah. Yeah. And he will rule the world. But the many antichrists of this verse are essentially the same as the many false prophets of 1 John 4, 1, which we didn't get to yet. Um, the teachers of error are precursors of the supreme human deceiver, the antichrist. Okay. So in some way, they're precursors. Uh, warning signs, precursors. Preacher. Yeah. Symptoms. So in other words, they're going to be doing things that this future antichrist will do. Verse 19, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out. I have in parenthesis in my, my yeah, translation. That, that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Very clear. I mean, the, I'm just reading from the text here. The many antichrists had been once been part of the same fellowship to which the apostles themselves belonged. Because it does say they, they went out from us, so they must have been yeah. of them at some point. Right? So they Just logically. Or something. Yeah. Uh, the word us used four times in this verse. Wow. <laughs> Obviously contrasts with the you of the following verse, which is emphatic in Greek. Here for the first time is seen the we, you, us contrast. And he points to chapter 4, which we haven't gotten to yet. Will we ever get to chapter 4? <laughs> At the rate we're going with. The Antichrist had not left the church or the churches to whom John writes, for if they had, they would no longer have been a problem. Right? They're still there. They were still there. So, uh, on the contrary, the apostle is concerned about the exposure his readers have to these men. They were departed from the church, which indicated they did not really belong to it in the first place. So when he, he made all his churches with it and preached and got them gone. And those people didn't belong to it to begin with, right? When he got when he was making those churches, Ephesus and the seven well, churches. He's only talking about the Antichrists. Uh, but they were part of it. Yeah, but they, they didn't believe, right? They were different gospels. I think um the seven churches, right? He's talking about. Yeah, I'm looking in the text here. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, if you want to read more than this, then yeah. look at the book. Okay, <laughs> he kind of explains it a little bit. Um, I have a star here I see where it says the Antichrist had definitely not left the churches or the churches to whom John writes. He already said that. Okay. On the contrary, the apostle is clearly concerned about the exposures readers have or will have to these men. One of the claims that they must have made, which gave them a false aura, aura of authority, right, they appeared to be authority, that they had originated in the same sphere where the apostles themselves operated, probably a reference to the Jerusalem church. Jerusalem. And then further on it talks about 
the apostles' argument here implies a schism or a split, right? Division of some kind between the Antichrist and the apostle, the apostolic circle. No doubt this had to do with the doctrine taught by them under verse, see verse 22. Um, they were denying that Jesus is the Christ. The question may be asked whether John thought of these men. Let's see if this is in your... Okay, I'm just going to stick with what you have here in front of you. So, um, I think a lot of people take this verse... I, I've heard this many times on, the, on YouTube or maybe on the radio. On the radio. Um, that says that uh, if they went out from us that they were not of us. In other words, if a person uh, comes to your church and gets saved and then leaves and joins some other group, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever, uh, they will say, well, they're not really saved. Because oh, cool. if, if they were saved, they would not have left your church. Huh. Okay, but that's not what this is saying. That's not. Now, it is possible that these guys that were in the church weren't saved. That is a possibility. But then it's also possible they were saved. Yeah, you, know, you don't lose your salvation for leaving the church, right? If you go to another church. Well, they would say that would evidence, be evidence, yeah, evidence of you evidence of not really being saved. Not really saved. And true. they use this passage to, to prove that. Oh. Okay. But it's really not proving that. It's just proving that um, these guys were teaching what wasn't true. Uh -huh. And at one time they were sort of part of this this uh, Jerusalem church, this you know the place where the church began, and now they have departed from. And someone mentioned it here. They departed from the teaching that Jesus is the Christ. Well, what does it mean that Jesus is the Christ? So let's read on that. Just one. chose the one. The yeah. one. Um, so the belonging isn't equivalent to get it going to heaven. That's, that's just what I was trying to say. The term anointing, okay, in verse 20. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. Mm. Okay. I don't think we read God. verse 20 yet. Oh, yeah, we did. Um, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and know that no lies of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? Okay. Now, according to, um, to this verse 21, he says, I have not written to you because you do not know the truth. In other words, he's not writing this because they, they don't know what they're talking about. In other words, they did know the truth. They knew who Jesus was. Um, and he wants to, to prove that no lie is of the truth. So no well, that sounds kind of like duh, right? No lies of the truth. But remember, that was part of what these revisionists were saying. And we're going to see that over and over again. They were saying that there's a mixture of good and evil in God. Right? Remember early on, it says you uh, walk in the light as He is in the light? Yeah. Well, the revisionists were saying, well, you can have sin and walk in the light at the same time. But you can't, you can't be in fellowship uh, and being so. in sin at the Double same time. Double jeopardy. So John has this, he, he's drawing these, these lines, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? In fellowship. That's the schism you're talking about. Out of fellowship. The one this the schism would be um, that, what are we talking about? 21. No. 22. To know the truth. Who is, a, who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? So here you have the, Jesus is the Christ. Denies the Father. He denies the Father and the and Son. And deny that Jesus is the Christ, right? But you can't have both. He's drawing a line here. So he, uh, I think what, what they might have been doing <coughs> is saying, well, Jesus was sort of divine, but he wasn't completely divine. Or something like that. There's, there's sort of like hedging. Well, right? who, who, who were they to make the distinction anyway? What, what, what was the basis of their 
they thought. Does that say? Does know. it say that? Doesn't really explain that. You know, where but they, they denied it for a reason. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. So I want to know what was the reason. Yeah. Why? 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 Uh, why? All they, didn't want, they didn't want to believe their self out there. Yeah. Maybe they yeah. wanted to be able to say, "Well, I'm sinning, but you know, I'm still in yeah. fellowship." Do whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to excuse. They might. It might have been more. That would be like a moral, ethical reason. They're right? denying the Father and the Son. Is that there? They wouldn't want someone to point to them and say, "Oh, you're you're living in sin, so you must." Have be in fellowship. They're going to say, oh, no, no. I'm still in fellowship. Yeah, even though a, I'm living he in He must be a trumpet. Yeah. <laughs> they also say that because he died, he, he couldn't trouble. be the one because he died and they didn't quite understand the message. That, like, in order to justify, oh, well, it wasn't a failed leader, it's just he wasn't the one. Yeah, if they believe that... That, that would, would be another justification. I would probably say they're not saved. Yeah, that's one. Wouldn't that be safe to say? Yeah, yeah. I think so. But, I don't think so maybe they were so just. I'm not saying that there wouldn't be a lot. I mean, maybe most of them were not saved, but I think some of them were saved. Some. Yeah. It doesn't sound good. It sounds they, as if they just came about just because you know you know what a troublemaker is to throw up you know into the fire to how do you say it? Uh, just to confuse things. There's some people who get really a kick out of just making a mess of. What really is narcissist? Yeah, now you realize, you know, back when these guys were coming around to Ephesus and Thyatira and all this stuff. I mean, Christians didn't have a Bible and say, yeah, "Oh no, what you're saying is wrong." wrong. <laughs> they had to go by yeah. word of mouth more. Yeah. That's I guess they had to rely on, on John's letter. Right, right. What came out of their mouth is what condemns them, right? What they were saying, their teaching. He, he so that's guess, correct. Yeah, so and that's I, known as fruit, right? Yeah. Believer, Remember right? how, how by, Jesus would say, "By your fruit, you will know them." Yeah. So, he's not talking about your lifestyle; he's talking about your words, your, word, what your teaching. About? So I guess it was easy to pervert what the truth was because oh, you're yeah. you're relying on the word coming from somebody else and trusting that it will be true that yeah. you've been told the truth. Because yeah. if not, then you're going to go off on a tangent without even knowing it. Yes. Yeah. But his seen. point here, he's saying that uh, um, uh, there, on, in, under 220, he says, the recipients of this epistle were spiritually advanced Christians, possibly the spiritual leadership, huh. or elders in the churches to which John is sending his letter. They were advanced like Christians. Seven oh. churches. If so, when the letter was read aloud in the public meetings, it would See? reinforce the spiritual authority of the leaders. Would reinforce the spiritual authority of the leaders. With this understanding, since the leaders knew all things, no, there's nothing things. that Christians in these churches need to learn from these revisionists, from these people that are teaching these other things. So all these guys had to do is really just open up their mouth and sound off, and they could do quite a bit of damage. You know, I've been to a Christian what reality for 20, was, 50 right? years, I was telling you the truth, right? But yet they were lying, right? They weren't, weren't professing the truth and started lying. Well, the problem is, they shouldn't have believed it. No. But they had nothing to guide them? Yeah. So John wrote this letter and gotcha. said, hey, look okay. up for these guys. Okay, gotcha. um, He has not written to them because they are ignorant of the truth. On the contrary, he writes precisely because they know the truth. Oh. It is clear that John is not writing to test whether the readers are genuinely saved or not. In view of verses 12 to 14, such a view reflects a blindness to the statements of the epistle itself. In addition to knowing the truth, John's readers also know that no lie is of the truth. And that's probably <laughs> one of these things, right? And so a lie is okay. <laughs> or No, a lie it is a lie, right? And you can have a lie mixed with truth. <laughs> that sounds right? like, definitely sounds like Trumpism. Like yeah. That. So uh, it was that whole mentality that there could be a mixture. Yeah, right. right. Okay. It's, okay. Lies it's, it's, okay. Okay. it's a lie, but it's not really a lie. Yeah. I got you. Whoa. Okay, whatever. And that God thinks it's okay. Yeah. You hard to believe. You uh, hard yeah. to believe the truth. Uh, yeah, mixed up like that. God thinks it's okay. Huh? It's just okay. be explained as like an endorsement of the spiritual exactly. leaders that are not, that are for 
Christ being or Jesus being the Christ and saying the people right. that are saying this are not being consistent with what I've told you. Exactly. And he's using his authority as an apostle to say, watch out for these guys. They're trying to mislead you with their authority that they get from being part of the original church. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Was, That's shocking, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. scary. <laughs> shocking. That's scary. It's shocking. How are these, scary how are these stuff. dummies following for what, for what reason were they really... <laughs> but that never happens today, right? <laughs> right, sure it doesn't. Don't you up. turn on channel MSNBC. Oh, we won't go on. Let's not go there. <laughs> gotcha. Fair enough. It's too confusing as it is. We have our, we have our hands full, don't we? Okay. Okay, okay and now we get to the, the, uh, the part here, verse 22. Uh, the, the lie particularly has in mind is the denial that Jesus is the Christ. Christ. Now, for John, of course, because he wrote the Gospel of John, right? Yes, yeah, he believes. The belief that Jesus is the Christ is saving belief. Saving belief. And remember, we were, I was talking about John 16.30, where it says, uh, What must I do to be saved? Be be that, uh, believe, in the Lord, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. saved. Well, what do you believe on him for? Salvation. Salvation. Okay, what kind of salvation? What kind? Eternal life. Okay. But it doesn't say that in Acts, right? No. It doesn't talk about eternal life, but that's what it is talking about. So, uh, let's just... This is just too good to pass up. Okay. Uh, 1 John 5, 1. We'll jump ahead. Although it's in the... Right here. In your, in your commentary. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Wow. Wow. That's heavy stuff. And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. Jesus Christ. But the, the key part is the, the first part of that verse, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And then he cross-references that to John 20. Well, he was starting all the churches with that belief, right? But yet... People were getting in, changing. That's why he started all the different. Well, churches. the teachers were mess, mess. Those false teachers were messing yeah, up. Yeah, messing but, up. Yeah, hopefully, not too many people were listening to them, right? I hope not. I I think think people that there. weren't saved, they, people that weren't saved, were listening to them, and they couldn't be saved. They're teaching that Jesus isn't the Christ. But look at what it says in, in John twenty. Verse 30 and 31. And truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Wow. Sometimes I think about that. <laughs> um, all the other signs. They were never written down. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, that was... The whole point of this whole book was to get people to believe that convince Jesus you, is the Christ. Convince, yeah. convict, convict, whatever. Who is the Christ? The Son of God. That's why I want the And that Son. believing you may have life in His name. So you believe that you have life in His name. That's how you get saved. And then you might want to jot down or write down somewhere John 11. One of my favorite passages for explaining the gospel to people. John 11, verses 21 through 27. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But basically, uh, let's start at verse 25. Jesus said to her, Martha, remember this is the account of Lazarus, and, uh, talking to Martha. Um, Who do you believe in Jesus said to, to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? So yes. he must have been talking about spiritually, right? Yes, Martha. Because Lazarus died physically. Yeah. So yes. he's saying, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die spiritually. And Jesus asked Martha, 
And he asked her, do you believe this? And then Martha said to him, yes, Lord. Did she say, uh, I believe that you are the resurrection and the life? Yes, Lord. What did uh, she say? Uh, what did she say? I believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Okay, so those two things are equal, right? Yeah. Did Jesus say, whoops, you got the question, you, you got the answer wrong. <laughs> mm. yeah, <laughs> he did. I see what you mean. She was, she was professing that Jesus was the Christ. And In that her is own way. equal to... I don't know if it was her own way. I think I think everybody understood I understand that, is that Jesus was the resurrection and the life. He who believes in him will never die spiritually. I have never asked him that. Like Lazarus died physically, right? So yeah. he's talking about spiritual life. <coughs> and then she said, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. So what is the point? I think you, whenever you read John 20, 31, you have to point to this passage. And whenever you read this passage, I think you have to point to John 20, 31. Those two things are equal. And so when Nicodemus was talking with Jesus, he should have understood this fact. That if Jesus was the Christ, that he would give this life from above. Remember, born again, you must yeah. be born again. So they understood that there needed to be this kind of life, this everlasting life, that would correct what happened way back in the Garden of Eden, right? <laughs> when death, remember that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Right? So death reigned from Adam, you know, until the new heavens and the new earth, really. Through the whole Bible. But for people that believe, they will never die. <laughs> and that was true from Adam and Eve all the way up to Jesus. Remember, everything was pointing to Jesus in the Old Testament, and everything is pointing back to Him in the New Testament. But this whole, it, it all revolves around believing that Jesus is the Christ, believing that He gives life to people who believe in Him for it. You know, in this book, 143 times they say Christ is the Son of God. In this book itself, I, I found that out. Okay. Now, uh, a lot of people argue that um, all you have to do is believe that Jesus is the Son of God to get saved. No. Believe that He died for your sin. Okay, yes. let's say you believe that Jesus is the Son of God and He died for my sins. Does that make you saved? Do you really believe it? I don't know if you're oh, saved. If you really believe yeah, it? Yeah, accept it. Yeah, it says that if you believe in me, you, you, you died for me personally. Personally, well, you used the right word. You said believe. <laughs> okay. Believe personally. Yeah. If you, if you, not, not if you really, really, really believe. It's just in the sense that there's someone that does not really, they only really, really believe. There's right? only one belief. You could do or you, <laughs> you don't. Believe, no? Or you don't. You either believe that Jesus gives everlasting life, like Martha said. Yeah. Martha understood it, right? Yeah. Yeah. He said, "Do you believe this?" Yeah. She, she got it. Now I think she was already saved. Yeah. Obviously. Probably. So she was just professing that um, Her yeah, this is true. You are the Christ. Of course, who else would you be? <laughs> and you, you offer everlasting life. That's why we called you to come here. You know, that's why we're grieving about this. And well, they had him right there. Yeah, they had him physically right dead. There. Lazarus was physically dead. We got to believe a person that we don't see. Yeah. Right? That was really the greatest sign in John, I think. Yeah, in John. Well, other than his Jesus' resurrection. But I think the um, raising of Lazarus was a, one of those signs that... For a reason. It was done for a this reason, is, no? He must be the Christ. He just raised this guy from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them still don't believe when yeah. they see yeah. that. How about, that's to put a lie to all the naysayers, no? Who said so otherwise? Who why were these guys denying this? Exactly. What was their I reason? What was their reason for their confusion? Because that's the devil they must have, been a good, must have done that. That might be the key. The that might what, be it. Maybe that's what John is driving at. Confusion, just saying, for the uh, sake of confusion. The, devil yeah, the, the, Antichrist, the Antichrist isn't only in the seven-year period, right? <laughs> He's saying, oh, the Antichrist is active today, uh -huh. <laughs> right? Distorting the truth about who Jesus uh -huh. was. And his plan, right? Okay, I think we beat that one to death. Yeah. That might be the answer. 
Um, Why? I didn't finish. Right. I said, the person who denies this truth is a liar. They denied it. Who subverts the very basis on which everyone is saved. So if someone were to hear that false teacher and their little congregation and believe them, they wouldn't be saved, right? Wow. Hmm. Believing that Jesus is the Christ means to believe that He is the one who guarantees eternal life to every believer. The lie John has in mind involved the denial that John's readers had eternal life. See verse 25. It's three verses down. They didn't believe that. Uh, if Jesus is not the Christ, then the reader's assurance that they possess this life by faith in Him was a mirage. <laughs> That's a good word, right? <laughs> If their assurance collapsed, so would their fellowship with God. Bad news. Okay, this, this can lead to nothing but bad news. To deny that faith in Christ is the only means of eternal life is to deny the Father also. And we won't talk about this, these people. <laughs> but people that add to faith in Christ are really denying God, the Father, as well as denying Christ. Yeah. Christ promised it, right? John 6, 47. He's talking to somebody, right? John yeah. 6, 47. Truly, truly, I say to you, who believes in me has everlasting life. But the Father, that, the Father also testifies to that too. And that's what he was talking about here, was uh -huh. when you deny the testimony of the Son, yeah. you're denying the testimony yeah. of the Father. All three of them. Yeah, all three of them. Yeah. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. He didn't mention the Holy Can't Spirit. Can't deny it. The Holy he, Spirit hadn't come yet. He didn't, uh, hadn't come yet. <laughs> but I mean, you can't deny it. Mm -hmm. Any one of the, the three twinners, Trinity. But that is a good question. Yeah. I have to think about that. Because ah. this was written pretty late. That was before Pentecost. It might have happened after Pentecost. Before Pentecost. You might be right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Um, but he's definitely involved. That's. So anyway. To verse 23. I'm going to get back to first John here. First John three, I mean two twenty two. Who's a liar? But he denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. We just talked about that. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. Um, okay, mm -hmm. it's pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. The denier of the Son does not have the Father either. Verse 24, therefore, okay, whenever you see the word therefore, what do you need to think about? Conclusion. Conclusion in light of what we just said. Yes. Whenever so, you said. so ever hear the, the phrase, whenever you see therefore, find out what it's there for? Yeah. yeah. So look backwards. <laughs> so this is a direct reasoning, linking word. That's what Billy Let means. that abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. Ah. Oh. So he's saying, don't follow these false teachers. You know the truth. You know better. Just let it abide in you, which we, you heard from the beginning. When we taught you, when Jesus taught you know, me, John, the Apostle John, just listen to what we told, told you from the beginning. If, if what you heard from the beginning abides in you, there's that word abide again, right? Abide again. You also will abide in the Son and in the Father. He's linking the Father and the Son together. doesn't mention the Holy Spirit. But. And this is the promise that He has promised us. What? Eternal life. Eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you. Here's the word abide again. I underlined them all here. Uh, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but as the same... Anointing teaches you concerning all things that is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in Him. So I'm down to verse 27, which is on the next page, but uh, actually on the behind it. But we kind of we kind of covered a lot of verses there. Um, the readers in verse 24. He's saying the readers can triumph over the wicked one's agents, the Antichrist, by abiding in God's word, which they heard from the beginning. As a result, they will abide in the Son and in the Father. The abiding life is the life lived by a disciple who keeps the Lord's commandments and is marked by love for the brethren. 
loves them. And again in verse 25, the Antichrist deny that Jesus is the Christ, but only by believing that Jesus is the Christ can that person obtain eternal life. And we already looked at that verse. God promises eternal life to any person who believes that Jesus is the Christ. The promise, the pronoun he, can refer to God or Christ himself. 25. He has promised us eternal life. He no. can refer to the Father. Well, the, the Father testifies that if you believe in Jesus, my Son, you have eternal life. And the Son says, he who believes in me has eternal life. Jesus is eternal life. Yeah. <laughs> so he could refer to either the Father or the Son. They both promise eternal life by believing in Jesus, right? And now, little children, abide in him that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. I'm in the next Where are you at now? section. Here. Right, here. Abide to be bold. The theme. Oh, I, I kind of skipped over this 27. Uh, talking about the anointing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of people that. have strange teachings about anointing. <laughs> Some people sell it on TV. Yeah. Anointing cloths. Anointing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anointing. that's not what this is talking about. Um, the, the anointing they receive from him suggests that the readers are the anointed ones by means of the Spirit who came to them from Jesus. The reader's anointing teaches them to reject the revisionist's lie about the anointed one. As a result of this anointing, they do not need that anyone teach them. So this anointing is actually testifying to them the truth of what uh, Jesus says, what John says, what, you know, what any of the other authors of Scripture said, what the apostles said. So there is a work of the Holy Spirit going on. You mentioned the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit is definitely involved. As a result of this anointing, they do not need that anyone teach them a mark of their comma, a mark of their maturity. See Hebrews 5.12. This maturity has already been implied elsewhere in this section. Remember the talking about the children, the young men, fathers, right? It's all talking about the level of maturity. Okay, and then the two parallel statements uh, in verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him, um, at the end of the verse, it says, Just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. As the same anointing teaches it, earlier on there. The word as. He's, he's focusing on as it teaches you concerning all things, and just as it has taught you, shows that the ongoing teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit is always consistent, that's the key, right? It's always consistent with what the Spirit has already taught. So if some guy comes in your congregation and says, oh no, this is new. Jesus is not really the Christ. Well, you don't listen to him because he says this is new. That's, right? that's where you shut it off, right? Yeah. You don't listen to that. Deviation. So the, the idea is that... Um, what the Spirit has previously taught, and the, the, their anointing confirmed it in their hearts that what He said was true. Um, it should not be negated or denied by anything He continues to teach. Whatever revisions the Antichrist taught could be rejected as not from the Holy Spirit if it contradicted what the Spirit had already taught. Already taught. So they didn't have a Bible; they could proof, you know, show that what you're saying is not true. But they had the Holy Spirit, right? The, the anointing. Bringing to their remembrance, um, you know, what, however the Holy Spirit did it to confirm what was the truth. I think this might be a good place to stop. Because we're starting another major section here. The life that leads to boldness before, before Christ's judgment seat.
Or the judge will see the last row. I'll mark that. Wouldn't you like to have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be great. Well done, my wife. Is that a shame that's the last verse here? A lot of these verses, these verses aren't inspired, neither are the chapter divisions, right? Because there's only one verse here. Yeah, it's a uh, it 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 Two verses. Yeah. A and B. Yeah. I, I thought that. You believed in me, now I have eternal life. No so you don't have to add anything. No. Let's just close. Father, we, we thank you for um, these great truths that we're looking at and how simple um, it is to explain to people like they were saying in, in the church service today that uh, we just need to tell people they need to believe in Jesus for their everlasting life and that we should commit ourselves to that. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen.